$55 an hour in Arizona, United States. And here's the question that girl did receive in order to get the job offer. You've said that you've increased test automation efficiency by 30%. How did you get to that number? These are the types of salaries and questions that you guys are going to hear today for the last 10 job offers that students from our bootcamp did receive. So let's take until the end of this video so you could see all of them. Mainly questions because I'm pretty sure you guys are interested in getting those job offers. Anyways, let me introduce myself and then we're gonna get directly to it. My name is Sergey Kramchenko. I'm a software QA engineer, lead manager, and a senior engineering manager of SDAT in the past. But these days I'm running a bootcamp called Cognify and helping people like you to become a QA engineer or to improve your existing skills. Now let's kick it off so you could hear those salaries and questions. So, very first one, Arizona, $55 an hour. And here's the question. You've said you've increased test automation efficiency by 30%. How did you get to that number? This is a very common question these days because whenever you're using AI or whenever you're using someone like me who will tell you that, hey, you gotta put some digits. You gotta make sure that you put some metrics of success or what did you improve in a company? And specifying that you did improve test automation efficiency by 30% naturally will bring a question. How in the world did you get to that number? So it will depend on a variety of things, such as how did you actually get to that number? But I can give you a couple of options. And the very first one is as simple as you have converted UI login helper method into API, or you've converted it into an API and then you're reusing token pasting it into every test and simply navigating to the page so you would not even have to send an API request you would simply be logged in upon a page refresh that's the one because if you have 300 tests that are using login and you're using UI helper method if you convert that I did math on my own by the way and it was approximately five seconds of savings for each test so if you convert 300 tests into five seconds of savings there will be 1500 seconds now let's convert it to minutes. Yeah, you have just saved 25 minutes of your time. And that's an option number one. Option number two, you could simply expand the test coverage or you could reduce the test coverage from redundant tests such as old ones such as duplicated ones such as outdated ones that will also increase your test efficiency it could potentially increase it up to 30 percent but there are hundreds of different ways to increase your test efficiency and i would love to hear how did you do that in the past or what other options do you think about taxes especially dallas guess how much ninety six thousand dollars and our student did get verified today, or actually yesterday. She did get a verification of employment and she's starting on Monday. So she's getting the position for the test automation engineer or simply test engineer. And she went through five rounds of interview in order to get that job offer. So let me give you two of those questions. First one, how did you create test automation framework from scratch? Well, here is a video of how I do it on a very basic level. You can go much more in depth, but if you guys are interested in building your test automation framework from scratch, this will be a very basic that you gotta start from. And the second question, describe yourself in one word. What can you bring to us? I would say these are two questions, but if you combine them into one, you should say something that they wanna hear about improvements that you will done in their company. I would call myself a challenger because I like challenges. Give me the task that I've never done and I will kill it. I will crush it. It's just a matter of time and resources, which I will definitely find because I'll simply love challenges. Third job offer, Denver, Colorado, 98 thousand dollars first job offer ever for the key automation engineer position and the question was framework best practices and tell me your tweaks that no one else is using if you guys are test automation engineers if you've been working for a while you know there's some companies are doing different things but if you say the tweaks that no one is using well if that girl did tell someone about it and someone already started using them it means someone is already using it but generally speaking tweaks like converting ui into api or maybe direct calls to the database to see data instead of creating it through the user interface or through the back end through the api those are kind of the tweaks you know and there are dozens of different tweaks that you can do in order to improve your framework for example instead of running five to ten tasks in parallel you could run hundreds the way i did it in one of the last companies i worked for by building a brand new infrastructure so there are thousands of different ways of creating or finding the tweaks that probably no one is using and everyone will have their own but you just heard a couple of options of mine oh by the way if you do have some tweaks that no one is using 
Leave them right below this video and I will make sure our school will be using them in the bootcamp. Los Angeles, California, the place where I'm located right now. And one of our students who got a job as an ASDAP for $54 an hour. Got this question. What's the difference between Cypress and a Playwright Test Automation Frameworks? Well, if you guys want to know the difference, I have tested both of them simultaneously. I have tested the speed. And you can find both of those links, both of those videos, by following this link right here, or preferably right below this video, because there are two of them, and I'm not sure if I can put them both right here. What are the main differences? I'll give you guys a couple. First of all, the main difference is how do they run? So Cypress is running in the browser directly in the browser. There are no requests going to the browser. Cypress is executed directly in the browser. So it should be the fastest framework in the world because it's running in the same place where the UI is running, right? Well, almost. Playwright is possibly faster. You'll find that out on this video right here that I just told you about. And Playwright is using Google DevTools requests in order to send the information to the browser. And you'll think, well, Playwright is using some DevTools requests to get into the browser and Cypress is faster. But you will see a significant difference when you're going to check out those videos that I was talking about. And the second largest difference is that Playwright is using asynchronous weight of writing the code. So you have to use async weight all the time. And Cypress does not. Well, it does underneath of the hood, but they made it as easy as iPhone and a Playwright, they made it as configurable as Android in order to be more powerful. So I would say, I would say for newbies, that would be the best way to differentiate both. Cypress is an iPhone, Playwright is an Android. With an Android, you have much more control and ability to configure things that you cannot have in an iPhone. So that's pretty much the difference. By the way, if you guys are interested in becoming a QA engineer or you want to improve your skills and if you're not sure if you're going to like our bootcamp, you don't want to pay money in advance, you can simply try one week introduction course that we have recently introduced. The price is as low as 20 bucks and you will become a part of USB startup. You will study with us for an entire week week, you're going to have three live webinars, you're going to have live support in the chat with our mentor. So if you want to give it a shot, I'm going to leave a link right below this video. Let's continue. United States, Chicago, Illinois, $90,000. And the question was, what types of selectors do you use to test automation and why? So usually you would say that you are using CSS selectors such as IDs, classes, tags, or attributes, and you're building your path and they're faster than the XPath. But generally speaking, I would question if they're faster than an XPath. XPath is used a bit different, but in, in some ways it's a little more powerful. An XPath can be used to go to the parent element and not only to the child element in a way that see, you can do it with the CSS. Although Cypress did implement dot parent method, which allows you to also go to the parent. But generally speaking, XPath is not slower. People think of it as much slower because people simply do the right click on a browser, copy as, and they choose XPath, and it gives them a very long as XPath that you should not be using. If you'll do the same thing with the CSS, it will also give you same long as CSS path that you will be using, and it will be as slow as an XPath. So if you do know how to use XPath, it can be quite powerful. And I did use it in the path quite a lot in the situations where I could not simply go downstairs, I would have to go upstairs into the parent or a grand grandparent element. Alrighty, Texas, United States, $65 an hour, junior QA engineer position. We rarely get those offers and this guy did get it. One of the questions that he had, it was actually for the manual QA engineer position, but they did ask him a couple of coding challenges and they did ask him how to get the today's date in a JavaScript. Well, it's fairly easy. It's a today dot uh, day or time and you, sim you can simply Google it and then you just paste the format that you need to get. I cannot remember it by heart. I don't think everyone in the world remembers it by heart unless you use it every month or at least every two months so you simply google jazz get today's date and you'll get an answer right away fairly easy and the guy did the same thing he simply googled it he got an answer he showed it he ran the code and he did have four algorithm challenges basic ones but he did have for the position of the manual qa engineer now you guys should probably understand why i say hey if you want to become a qa engineer you should go for the full course or qa automation only if you did go through the manual in the past or if you do have manual experience right now because majority of the jobs in the market are automation. Even if they're manual, they can possibly ask you questions about automation testing as well. 
United States, Atlanta, Georgia, $95,000 a year senior QA position. That's quite an amazing for Georgia. Georgia is even much cheaper than a Texas. So that's quite more efficient to live in Georgia, get 95, than live in Texas and give 90, get 96. Let me know if you guys think differently, but this guy did not send me any of you questions. So I don't really know what questions was he asked about. United States, Denver, Colorado, $55 an hour. And a question was about basics, basic methods of the Cypress, such as how did you use Intercept in your test automation framework? How did you use this or that method? What are they used for? As simple as that. And the girl did not have any issues because she did go through the same interview questions and she did have it in the internship in our startup experience in a bootcamp. So that was not challenging. And the next one, Los Angeles, California, $110,000 as that position again. Live coding challenge to compare an array with an array of object and give a percentage of the difference between both. This one will make me think for, for probably a couple of minutes in order to structure it in the right way because first you have to compare it and while you're comparing it you have to save the amount of differences and then you just have to calculate the percentage. So first of all I would write down the requirements and second of all I would kill it one by one in order to get you the percentage you wanted. Taxes again, $105,000. You guys might already be probably thinking of moving to Texas because they get a lot of job offers. Well, I'm, I'm not sure why, but that's how it works. If the test is flaky, what do you do? Well, that's an amazing question that we get at the end of our course because you guys will always get into flaky tests. No matter how good you are in programming, no matter how good you are in test automation, there will always be some flakiness, just like in the boys in California. Anyways, what do you do with it? Well, first of all, you can try to fix it, you can find, you can debug it, you can find a reason why is it flaky. If you cannot, if it's a, for some reason possibly a server-side server issue and developers cannot find it, they think it's not important at the moment, it's a low priority, you can quarantine the test, you can move it to the quarantine and not run it. Or one of the best options if you cannot fix it is to rerun it. If it's flaky, it means it doesn't always fail, it doesn't always pass. So if you add a rerun, that can potentially fix it. If you add two reruns, you'll have a much higher chance of fixing it. So it'll be up to you and up to your team if you want to quarantine it or if you want to first try to fix it, then try to rerun it multiple times. And then if it doesn't help and if it's a low priority, simply quarantine it until better times come. And the last one and my very favorite from Europe, $4,750 per month, which is quite a good salary for Europe as a key automation engineer. This girl did hate me for two weeks while she was solving a coding challenge as the part of the homework that I give her. And the challenge was automate four API requests or CRUD, create, read, update, and delete for one of the websites we're using for test automation. She hated me. She did hate me. She told me that honestly in my face, but she called me a couple of weeks after and she was sarcastically crying and laughing because she said I got a job offer I'm getting a 40% raise and you know what question they gave me they gave me the challenge to automate crud the same freaking crud that you gave me and I've killed it in two hours they gave me two days for it well you guys can hate me that's completely fine as long as you get your job offers and you tell me about it I'm going to be the happiest guy in this world now I did share a lot of information with you guys and it's your turn now tell me what was the most interesting question that you have ever had during the interview that helped you or did not help you to get a job offer don't forget to drink water get some workout and I'll see you next time